Hello and thanks for joining me. Now I've been asked quite a few times to make a short video about how I use DaVinci Resolve. Um, but first of all let me start with why I use DaVinci Resolve. I started out on my channel using iMovie, that's because I'm an Apple user and of course it ships free with Apple products. But it wasn't long before I ran up against the limitations of iMovie in terms of the sort of creative things I wanted to do. So I looked around for an alternative and I considered various paid alternatives. But when I found DaVinci Resolve, which let's be fair, is completely free of charge, it was a no-brainer. I mean, why would you spend good money on paid products when you can get an almost complete product absolutely free? Now, there are certain aspects of DaVinci Resolve which you do have to pay for, and the full price version, I think, is something like 300 bucks. But the free version has most of what you need, and I'm really happy with it, and I certainly have got no thoughts of trading up to any other version. Do I like it? I absolutely love it. It's a really easy workflow. And what I thought I would do is show you my workflow with one of my genuine uh, vlogs, which is currently in production. By the time you see this particular film, you should have seen the one that you're about to see me start editing. But I thought I'd do it that way because it'll give you an idea of how I actually make use of this software. And there are a few features about it which do make it really easy in terms of the way that I use it. So. Despite all that cryptic rubbish, let's go onto the computer and I'll show you what I mean by all that. So here we are in the edit screen and this is where we spend most of our time when we're working on a movie. Over here in the top left we've got all our clips that we've imported. You'll see I've set up a couple of folders because I like to organise things as I go along. Um, you can have as many folders as you want. I've got a static folder and what that does is that holds all the things that are common to all of my movies. And the way I operate is that I don't create a new movie each time. So that's why these things are sitting on the timeline already because they've got animations, they've got fade in and fade out. Um, and it just saves me having to redo it each time. So all I do is insert my clips along the timeline, move these end elements along as I need to. Uh, and that just saves me a lot of time in the final edit. So down here I've got access to transitions and audio effects and various other things of that nature which are all drag and drop so it's really easy to use. This is my output window up here. Over here I've got access to things like uh, key framing, so cropping, transforms, uh, audio levels, various things like that. And then I've got an audio mixer here so I can keep tabs on what's going on with the audio. So. I'm all set up uh, and as I said the way I operate is that I don't create a new project I just simply overwrite a previous one so I've renamed this to project number 99 because this is one for a video that you've probably already seen. So let me show you how it works. In this window here I'll pull a clip in and you can see that it's got the audio waveform visible and you can preview it just by clicking play there and I've marked in and out points so I can either drag the entire thing onto my timeline and you'll see it's also dragged an audio channel on as well. Uh, but I don't want that because this is a bit of B-roll. So to save me time, to save me separating the audio and deleting it, I can simply grab just the movie track and put it on my timeline. And that saves me a lot of time. Let's say I also want this one, but I'm going to use the whole thing. So we pop that in. You'll notice that these clips all snap to each other which saves me a bit of time uh, and then we'll pull that one on as well uh, and finally let's pull that one on okay so we've got four clips there and we're going to make a montage we're not going to use the full clips the first thing that I do when I've got some clips added to my timeline before anything else is I color grade. Now a lot of movie makers will color grade at the end but you'll see why I do it at this point because it actually makes it more streamlined. So we'll go to this first clip, go to color and I'm going to just set that so that I'm in the middle of it on my timeline. Now quick word about this, I always shoot with a flat color profile because it gives me better dynamic range. So that means that the clips, when they come in, look slightly washed out and there's not much contrast. So uh, because I use a DJI uh, Osmo Pocket, there's a DJI LUT, 
which I simply apply by dragging it onto there and that gives my contrast a little bit more punch. Now this is just ever so slightly overexposed so I might just pull it down just a little and I'm quite happy with that. My color balance looks fine. I could play with the color balance either across the various uh, tonal ranges, shadows, mid-tones and highlights, or I can play with it across the entire uh, clip. But the big advantage to the way this operates is I can now select my next clip and because it was shot round about the same time in the same light, I can simply duplicate the, the grade that I've applied from the first clip. Now with this particular clip, because this was shot at a different time, I'm also going to apply my LUT, because that's standard, but now I want to do a little bit more work on the uh, contrast and also you can see that there's, uh, the highlights need to be pulled down a little bit. In order to do that, I'm going to create a new node and as you can see that's now highlighted and I'm going to apply my uh, grades to this new node. So I'm going to pull the gain down a little bit. Gain is just the equivalent of highlights. I'm going to just push in a bit of saturation because it's looking slightly flat. And I'll just bring the midtones up a smidgen. There, that's perfect. I'm quite happy with that. And again, this one is going to have the same grade applied to it. And there we are. I've just saved a whole lot of time. Now the reason that I grade before I edit is because when I go into my edit, if I wanted to split this clip, so we'll just uh, split that clip, and let's say I wanted to lose a bit of it, and then pull that up and snap that back onto the timeline. By doing that, I've preserved the grade. And so what that means is that I don't have to grade those now as individual clips, so I save quite a lot of time. Let's just move these out the way, and I'll show you how I apply a similar process to my audio. Got a couple of clips here, we'll pull those onto the timeline. Um, now what I'll do is I'll do some work on this audio channel. First of all I'm going to switch the equalizer on. I always put a little bit in this 4k register because that just gives vocals a little bit more punch, makes them a bit clearer. I'll apply a de filter, again that comes free with uh, DaVinci Resolve. So that just helps to reduce the, the uh, sibilance, uh, especially if you've got a cheap microphone, which I have. Um, and finally, a little bit of parametric EQ, where at the 192 hertz range, I push in about 10 decibels of boost. And finally, we'll just boost that up to about plus six decibels. And if I play it, you'll see over here on my mixer, I can see that that's peaking just ever so slightly into the red. Quite happy with that. So now what I can do is if I take the attributes from that work, I can paste them onto that sound line there. And I don't have to do the same thing over again. And again, with the color, similar to the color grading, I can split a clip and the audio on both sides of the split will be preserved. So I've saved myself a whole lot of time in doing it on all the various little audio chunks. So those are color grading and, and uh, audio enhancements. Finally, let me show you very quickly how I use it to do transforms. And I use that a lot. You'll see that I do um, zoom in, zoom out, fade transformations and various other things. And this is uh, another aspect of DaVinci Resolve that I find really useful. The first thing that I use transforms for is straightening the horizon. Now, Sod's law is I haven't got any horizon clips at the moment, I don't think. Oh yeah, that one's off. We'll pull that onto the timeline and I'll demonstrate with that one how I'd make it straight. I'm gonna switch on this frame because that makes it easier to see. And then I'll rotate that round to straighten up my horizon. It's not gonna to need to rotate much because it's almost level probably about one degree, something like that. Uh, and then by zooming in, you'll see that I've then avoided it being clipped at all, top and bottom corners. So that's a really easy way to straighten up a wonky horizon. So that's horizons. What I can also do uh, using this, let's say with this particular clip, I want to zoom in 
uh, as part of the uh, visual effects. So I'll create a keyframe and I'll create a keyframe for XY position as well. You'll see why in a moment. Go to the end of that segment, create another keyframe and I'm going to zoom it in to about 1.8 times. Now let me just have a quick chat with you about how I can do this. I shoot everything in 4K. I've read countless debates in forums about people saying you don't need to shoot 4K, there's no need for doing that if you're going to output a 1080p for YouTube. Well that's entirely true, except if you do what I've just shown you. Because by shooting in 4K I can zoom in and I'm preserving my definition. And so that gives me the flexibility that I need when I'm trying to do creative stuff in my edits. What I can also do with this, because I've set a keyframe for my XY position, is I can pull my horizon down a bit and you'll see that white line coming in there which shows me where the top of that is. Let's switch that off and let's just review the effect of that. And you can see it zooming in and dropping down and it gives the impression of much more movement in the camera even though the camera was pretty static. Now another thing I can do with this is it allows me very easily to do a jump cut. So if I cut that and then highlight after the cut, zoom that in say to there, and what this allows me to do then if I play it back is to reinforce a point. Blah 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 reinforce point. And again because I've shot it in 4K I've lost no resolution in doing that at all. And because I'd already graded it and I'd already done my audio enhancements, I don't have to do it as two separate clips. So another thing you just noticed is I can zoom in and out of the timeline really easily. And one thing I would say is that with any software that you use, it's always well worth your while getting familiar with keyboard shortcuts because they will speed your workflow up immensely. That's pretty much it as far as how I edit footage goes. Um, I can just then use this system to be really creative really easily. When I'm putting stills on, I always show stills for 8 seconds. So let's zoom into here, take this still, pull it out to 8 seconds, then grab another still and by snapping that on top, I can snap it out to the same length and I don't have to, I can really quickly and easily set up my stills. Okay, now a quick word about transitions. They just get dragged and dropped onto the timeline. I'm going to select that, pull it out to a second and a half because I want it to be a slightly longer transition. Between pictures I always just do a cross dissolve. So I do a dip to colour followed by a cross. A quick word about my stills. I never do a Ken Burns effect on them. I don't like them zooming in and zooming out. The reason for that is if you walked into a room and one of my images is on a wall, you don't get a zoom in or a zoom out. An image has to stand up by itself where you view it as a viewer and you get the full image in one go. And I try and do the same thing on my movies because I feel it's slightly more genuine. Um, if the image is rubbish, zooming in and out isn't going to make it any better in my opinion. So that's how I treat my edits. Finally for DaVinci Resolve, the Deliver tab, really simple. It's got a YouTube 4K output. I'll just name it. I always set the quality to restrict it to 10,000 kilobytes per second. I found that if I use it on automatic or I restrict it to higher numbers, um, the quality isn't visually improved, it just takes up more disk space and creates bigger files which I could do without. On this setting a standard 12 to 15 minute vlog runs to just about a gig, shade over a gig, something like that. Um, and then I'll hit start render uh, and it'll take about five minutes to render one of my vlogs. I think that's about it for this one. Hopefully it's uh, been helpful and answered your questions. If you've got any other questions it hasn't answered just leave a comment, I always answer every comment. I'm not sure where I'll be for my next video, but hopefully I'll be out taking pictures. And if you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time. Cheers.